Goldman Sachs be trying to sell the shitty deal? Well, can you answer again, that one? Can words. you answer that one, yes or no? The world is mine. People is very unhappy with the crisis, and we really want to change. The world becomes more open and connected. And in a more open world, many of the biggest problems we face together will become easier to solve. We are moving more and more away from a web-based capacity to a mobile environment. It's not about powers of might, it's about powers of knowledge. Many people believe Mr. Assange to be innocent, myself included. Last Friday night, I tweeted a photograph of myself, which was a hugely regrettable mistake. The world has changed. They killed Osama bin Laden and took custody of his body. In Europe, Greece is emphatically denying rumors that it's planning to leave the Eurozone. It's just a global revolution. What do you feel if you see this movie? Can I get some reactions? Good. But what do you feel when you see the movie? These were only the first six months. So for me, it makes me uncertain, scared, but this is our reality. And what you see is a few things, I think. You see a global economy, a stock market which is unpredictable, reacting with any rumors, not connected to the economic reality. We see in Asia growing, declines in, in, in Europe, no leadership to make the markets work, all uncertain. What we see on a social level is that basically in the society, you know, our current structures don't work anymore. Global warning, still an issue, the difference between poverty and rich, it doesn't fit anymore. We don't have the solutions yet. What do we see on the customer side? On the customer side, we see ultimate control, by the way, by the customer. Everybody really has a remote control, by the way. You are in charge. From that perspective, as a customer, you are in charge. And the biggest driver for that is the technology. It took 38 years for the radio to get 50 million users. It took 13 years for the television to get 50 million users, four years for the internet, three years for the iPod, and Facebook had 250 million users basically within a year and becoming the third largest country in the world. When we talk, when I'm talking here, 100 million of movies are uploaded through YouTube. This is our world uncertain and uncertainty people ask for leadership we need leadership from governance from our country but you also need personal leadership actually a futurist david hall calls that we are in a constant flux it seems if there's a current earthquake underneath us which makes us nauseous but we will survive and there will become a next equilibrium i'm very happy to be grounded in budapest again Jona Pot Kivanok, Budapest. <laughs> I'm happy to be back. I can drink Palinka again. I can go to Symbol tonight and run my laps on Margaret Siget. <laughs> and I'm honored that I was asked to share a personal story about leadership, which is for me the first time in my life. So it's an experiment for me. I did it in a business setting, but not in a personal setting. So I just tell a personal story. I do think there's a big difference between management and leadership. Management is about stability, about predictability, and you get, get great results out of it, Fort. However, it works in a stable environment. If we need to be a little bit more, you know, if this environment is not that stable, leadership is needed. Leadership is about inspiring, mobilizing, a long-term vision about service-based. 
Management is earned. I, I, you know, I became CEO four times. CEO is a stripe. Leadership is earned by the people who work for and with you. For that's me a significant difference. It's every day you should earn leadership. And I'm still on my way to learn it. And about personal leadership, no miracles. No miracles. You should drop your ego at the door when you enter your office every day. Every day, drop your ego. And what I learned to enhance my leadership skills is basically be self-aware and look back. And I learned at Columbia University to draw a lifeline. I want to show you that exercise. Maybe it helps you, maybe not, but I will show you my exercise. It made me more self-aware and I think a little bit more complete. I was born in Berlin, in the American sector, otherwise I wouldn't be here, I think. My mother raised three kids alone. My father left when I was, well, my brother, when I was six, left three kids alone. And I think loyalty and taking responsibility are kind of very important for me, very important. Sometimes I take too much responsibility. And my mother had a surgery when she was 32, you normally have at 64. Her spine was partly replaced by an iron plate. She took care of me. She sent me to best universities. I got probably too much love, which shows that I want to see the world now and escape it a little bit. I was raised. I was so fortunate. I, my mother remarried with my stepfather, which is my emotional father. I desperately needed a father. I was nobody could handle me. Too much energy, completely out of control. So I'm very happy with my father. This is in Budapest. I take them once a year and I can afford it on a city trip. This was in Budapest. I was basically partly raised by my uncle and my aunt. And, uh, you know, their son was my best friend. And two days before I met him last time, he committed suicide. He was sick. And they also lost their daughter, Frederik, one of the famous Dutch actress. She recovered two times from cancer. And you know what I learned from that? Count your blessings, count your blessings, and I'm so bad in it. I'm looking so much forward that I forget to enjoy today and tomorrow. Please count your blessings what you have. It's for me important also at work. I went to university, I went to Dartmouth, I went to Groningen, which you pronounce you will spit in my face, so don't do that. <laughs> the Dutch sounds like throat disease, my Hungarian friends tell me. So that's what we did. Then uh, I basically um, start working with, I had hair when I started working, by the way, so I lost it. <laughs> I met my wife, basically we met, and 10 days later we lived together. She's the best thing what happened to me. And I need to apologize to her because, Bocanot, because last night I was not that nice to her. So Bocanot, I think that's Hungarian for excuse me, correct? The most important word I needed to learn. Then, um, what happened after that, we went to the US, because we like speed, space, and entrepreneurship. And we really learned to know each other. We stayed there for five years, we wanted to stay, but um, we went back to the Netherlands. A little bit too long, actually, because we want to explore the world. We got married a little bit later. Big party. By the way, she gave me hair there. I had no hair, but she put it in the, in the picture, photoshopped me. So she thought I looked a little bit better. And... Uh, then we went to, you can see that Budapest. Great time. What a country, what a city. Despite the fact that I have some troubles with your government, uh, but the taxi driver on my way told me we both speak Hungarian, but we don't understand each other, the government and him. So it is not only me. So I think what I learned is, you know what I said? Loyalty, taking responsibility, be positive and looking forward and not too much backwards are very important to me. And I took that within my career. And I was very fortunate to now that I could do a lot. I'm always eager to learn different things, always around technology, organization, and distribution. I share you a few things what I, what I did. Uh, I worked in the Netherlands and, uh, for my first boss who really believed in young people. So I still believe giving young people a lot of opportunities because he gave me that. And I developed expert systems in the 90s. It's now old fashioned, by the way. I went to the US, and my highlight was there, I became vice president of customer service, and I felt like this, highlight. Three months later, Martin, you have to lay off people. Then that sex for six months, very bad in my, in my stomach. 
you know, and the company could have avoided it if they would have changed in time. So to change in time when nobody sees it is very important value for me, but not that easy. I went to the Post Bank, which is the mother of ING Direct, and was responsible for the securities and mutual fund business. Hot, hot business. I was on television every three weeks, so I was the man. On the same side, the, the workload was so high that I had crying people on the phone, waiting lines for customers for over, a, over two hours. So I had to announce on national television a customer stop. We cannot handle new customers. Executive board didn't appreciate that, but it was the right thing to do for the customers. After that, I became responsible for all internet activities in the Netherlands, the Postbank, I screwed up massively. I became nominated as the e-manager of the year, the best site of the world, but on the same time, I almost had a nervous breakdown and uh, a burnout. I took too much responsibilities, did one project too much. Worked nine months in a row from two to two o'clock at night and six o'clock in the morning. And my boss, Eric, gave me a very bad appraisal because I didn't say no. It was the best learning I ever got. Best learning. But not always easy when you're ambitious, but it almost killed, my killed myself in the process. I went to Nationale Nederlander, a very big company, became a member of the board there. Company only managed on profit. Forget to focus on the customers. Took five years to restore it. Five years. Again, not focusing on the future. And then, went to Hungary. Here you see the sales force of ING Hungary, 3,000 people, all in Formula One. Try to give, try to lead a company where you don't speak the language, which is run 16 years by the same CEO very well, and you are a Dutch guy there. Not that easy, but an extremely humbling and learning experience and a good confrontation with yourself. So I always try to find places which pushes me and challenges me. And together, what I did is is developing out of this my leadership compass. And my recommendation would be, try to develop your own compass. I don't care what it is, but this is important for me. And what is important for me is that you always bring the future to the present. Try to imagine how it could be and try to translate it to today. What I believe that you need to think out of the box, which is not that easy in an insurance or financial industry, I can tell you. A lot of pushbacks to draw you back into the past. Look outside. It's important for me is that you are, but I, do you say that? Are honest to yourself and authentic, remain authentic. There should not be a difference how you work and how you live. It should be one person. When people ask me, I want to say this informally to you, I said, there's no difference between formally and informally with me. I'm me. I just don't understand that. And the other part what is important for me is you should be able to mobilize always yourself in order to mobilize others. You have a choice. Every morning you can wake up with a lemon in your mouth or with an orange. If you wake up too many times with a lemon, find another job, I would say. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. You're wasting your full potential. You're wasting your full potential. I developed over the years my leadership beliefs. And you know, I can recommend to do the same. And there are a few of them. One, never ignore your future context. Secondly, a strategy without execution is a hallucination, a dream, if you cannot make it work. I love those American one-liners, by the way. Say it, don't spray it is also a good one if you speak with a little bit more fluids. I strongly believe in passion and compassionate. Passion and compassionate. I always believe that if you have a diverse team in ages, gender, whatever, a joint vision and some adaptive adaptive plan, you always deliver results. For that reason, I will say yes to any challenge, because I strongly believe in that, strongly believe in that. I believe in continuous learning, and to always be honest, open and direct, and in the end, to truly follow your heart. Follow your heart. Heart is what it's all about, not only the brains. And Stay true to yourself. Not always easy, difficult, but be true to yourself. I'm still learning to be that, by the way. It's so easy to conform to, conform to pressures upstairs, to conform around you. Being yourself, I see you nodding, is not that easy. 
It's painful. But you have to do that. Maybe sometimes it means you have to get away to a different job or a different opportunity. But always try to be true to yourself. You know, and I think to, to, to finish it, um, my wife sent me this uh, two nights ago. Um, I want to read this. Can you, can you do me a favor and read with me? Is that possible that you can read with me? Is that possible? I don't know, it's an age of interaction, so I try to practice here a little bit. Can you think we can read this together? Can we do that? Okay, can you start then? Can you start, sir? I guess they are just first together. So, while the mind, mind looks, for looks for the proof, the heart looks for engagement. While the mind looks for information, the heart looks for passion. While the mind looks for answers, the heart looks for experience. The minds make a decision, but it's the heart that makes commitment. There is a Chinese saying which says, if you see, you forget. If you read, you will remember. If you experience, will you will do. I wish you an intense learning journey to find what engages you. If you find what engages you, I'm pretty sure you will engage others. I hope I shared some information that could be beneficial for you, and I earned you as an audience. Kusenjuk, Sepen, and Vison Latasha.